Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me today is Sridhar Tetyalaji. We got this as a special session because a lot is happening. Very important information that we are going to be sharing with you. A small request to all of you to like this video and also to subscribe to our channel. So let's now welcome Sridhar Tetyalaji. Sridhar Ji, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar and good morning and good evening to everybody and nice to be here. Sridhar Ji, a lot to cover. So I'm going to jump right into the slide deck and let's go with the slide deck, please. These are the main points. The S&P has breached a historic 5,000 mark. Trade leaders around the world urge governments to join the Red Sea military effort. We will show you with maps why this is now becoming the new flashpoint. Oil prices rise as Netanyahu rebuffs ceasefire times. And this exactly is also another place where a lot of action is happening. We will give you that information too. And Bitcoin breaks about $45,000 to its highest levels since the day after the spot ETF went live. We talked about the ETF. So we'll cover all these things. Let's first start with India news. Let's go to the next slide, please. Economy was in crisis in 2014 when the NDA took over and a 15-point rejoinder via white paper by finance minister. Sridharji, you had actually been part of some of these things. How Talk to us about how things were in 2014 when you were actually part of the group that was assisting the prime minister well i think that the uh, the some of the key challenges was um, you know the balance sheet um, npa um, issues uh, allocation of capital um, no disinvestment uh, modest disinvestment decisions um, you know at that point of time foreign direct flow foreign, foreign direct investment was about 34 billion dollars uh, you know you needed capitalization, you need uh, reforms, you need uh, ease of doing business so that people can come and transact. You needed to establish joint venture and you needed to give impetus to both manufacturing and agricultural sector. So several things have happened since then. And in this 15 points, um, you know, it's very evident if, I, if we go through each one of these items, like FDI today is about close to $95 billion. If you look at the energy management during the crisis, it's quite efficient. If you look at the PLI programs, the amount of capital into uh, various segments of the manufacturing, uh, you are beginning to see a very, very huge um, shifting landscape, both in the defense and the telecommunication sector. If you look at the agriculture, the reforms that have taken place in the agriculture, and also some of the uh, efficiencies around uh, the movement of commodities as well as the, um, the exports, uh, that also has seen the uptick. So overall, I think that at a macro level, it doesn't mean that things have progressed. Lots of things can still further continue to improve. But where we were in 2014 to where we are today, uh, it's a quite an amazing transformation. This is what has been covered in the 2023 15-point report as, you know, the highlights that I alluded to. Whether you want to call it 1.4 trillion, 1.5 trillion, 1.6 trillion, doesn't matter. Today, India is a 4 trillion economy. So India has added close to 2.4, 2.5 trillion dollars, um, you know, in the past kind of uh, 10 years or 9 years, as you may call it, relative to what it did in the first you know, 60 years or 65 years uh, of its history, Sriji. So it's a quite a remarkable transformation in the past 10 years. Mute.
Check. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry about that. This is going to have a bit of an echo, so I'll speak as less as possible. On inflation, your thoughts, sir? Well, I think that inflation, the fact that uh, India is going, you know, neck and neck and in uh, in parallel with um, with uh, the, the global central banks um, is an indication that it has also, for the sixth consecutive um, period, it has kept its interest rates flat at 6.5%. Is obviously, the, it's all to do with energy efficiency and energy arbitrage pricing that India has done, and also around a lot of food products and a lot of important commodities being sourced and, and uh, being supplied from inside. The three major areas of inflation which is confronting the world. One is energy, number one. Number two is around the commodities. And uh, number three is around the food. So because of everything is, you know, imported from many places in the world, I think India has managed very efficiently, which is why um, the if, uh, the inflation is, is being contained. I think inflation is around the same as the interest rate is around the 65 to 7%. They would like, like to bring it to about 5.5%. But I think that um, that will come uh, as the market stabilizes. We still have geopolitical tensions, Sriji. Sir, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, looks like uh, Nikki Haley reads the comments on P Guru's section because every time we have talked about any US partnership with India, the first comment or the maximum set of comments will be that we don't trust the Americans. And she has echoed a similar sentiment. What does the US need to have to do to change this perception? Well, I think um, uh, uh, let's kind of, um, I know um, people will take a political connotation out of this. Let's look at the period when Mr. Modi and, uh, uh, you know, sorry, Mr. Wajpai and George Bush, uh, lots of things happened during that period. Then when you look at Modi and President Trump, I mean, it was probably the golden period in terms of the strategic partnerships and relationships, these two plus two, a number of things began to happen the formation of Quad, uh, defense, energy, uh, strategic security and the deterrence to China. Lots of things happened because the two leaders could trust and transact with each other. And also where there are disagreements, they said, okay, we disagree, we can't do a deal. That's not the case with the present administration. The present administration wants to work, but at the same time, some of its actions are counterintuitive in terms of the strategic objectives that they want to pursue. Now, their whole goal seems to be how do you wean India away and make it permanently uh, aligned with the United States? And you have to accept the fact India will not do that because many things that you do have to also align with India. For example, you know, the defense supplies, for example, energy, for example, you know, some of the strategic efforts that are going on. We'll come to that in a minute when we talk about Mr. Biden in terms of the secure, you know, very sensitive documents that uh, that resulted in he not being prosecuted by DOJ, why India may have some concerns. The fact that India has not participated, we're jumping ahead here, there's a point. India has not participated in the most recent uh, South China Sea exercises with Japan and Australia. There is more than more than, uh, you know, Mixed something high yeah. uh, in terms of. So these are things, and she has rightly gauged, uh, and she uses the word, when I spoke with Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, the Prime Minister of India, I get the impression that he wants to do more, but he doesn't trust the United States leadership. Next one, please. Um, Maldives, Indian troops to be replaced with technical personnel, the government has confirmed. Serbian tennis star Dihana or Dijana, I don't know how to pronounce that. Radanovic has embroiled in controversy over comments about India. Sir, what happened, sir? Well, I think she's played three tournaments, three ITF tournaments in India, and she has made, uh, which has kind of caught uh, the social media into a storm. She said, you know, um, India has a problem with, uh, you know, food, travel, and general hygiene. Uh, you know, uh, it was not, uh, you know, very kind of a healthy environment for to be for me to be in and, you know, playing tournaments. She made it, uh, she went to Munich and she also made, gave a similar type of a yeah, press interview. So people said that, you know, I mean, you know, you don't go and go overseas. Um, and if you want to make a comment, make a comment and make an observation and move on. So 
these comments were viewed by many social media people as racist. And she has said that, please take these comments within the context of my experience. I lived three months in India. You know, I had problems in all these three areas that I'm alluding to. So why do you coin, want to call it as a racist observations against India? So this is the uh, this is the big big news uh, which was covered. I don't know in India, but it certainly was covered in uh, United States in some you know important media stream. Any, anything that embarrasses India is good for them, and uh, we seem to have momentarily lost Sridhar Ayerji. Uh, Sridhar Sridharji, he'll be coming back. Can you hear us, sir? I can hear you. Okay, go go ahead, sir. Indian news, Maldives. Uh, Maldives. Um, the Maldives is basically we have stated this all the time and which is namely you know it's they call it as the media calls it defense no they are they are not defense they were not there doing any armed uh, activities they were basically from army but helping these guys to operate the helicopter and other kind of equipment that was given to them so they're going to be now replaced by what they call technical personnel which is people who know how to operate these machines but except they will be either retired personnel uh, or from other types of uh, um, areas within, obviously within the army, when nobody operates a military helicopter, it has, you have to be from some way. So they call it as technical personnel. Remember, this was the exact deal that was signed and we talked about it in DGI, exact deal that was signed between the two, two foreign ministers. But the story is that the president went and uh, made a, you know, I don't know what you want to call, fool of himself by saying, you know, get out. Well, where's the get out? I mean, there's a deal. The technical personnel are going in and uh, the Maldives Defense and National Forces are reliant on these people to operate these machines. Sridharji, I will not be surprised if India imposes a visa ban on all Maldivians coming into India. You should watch viewers. Sir, uh, Savio's uh, hang out with me yesterday where he talked about the involvement of Maldivians in the IISC bombing uh, where one professor and a few other people were injured. One professor was actually killed. IISC is a place where you come to learn. These rascals went there and, and put a bomb. Another one is a 2611. Another person from Maldivian origin who trained at LET had actually received uh, Mumbai locations along with David Headley. And and US keeps talking big and uh, about Pannu. They have not coughed up David Headley. They said he's a citizen of US and he cannot come to India to stand trial. So the, 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 this whole thing about Maldivians, Mal, it's Maldivia's loss. All those people who are really sick, who can't get treatment, I would not be surprised if India just puts a blanket back. Let's move on to the next one. We have a lot of things to cover. Next one, please. U.S. major stories, no criminal charges for Biden despite willfully retaining classified documents. Sir, who is the special counsel? Uh, I think his name is... Um, uh... Eric Smith. No, 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 no. A Burr, B U R. Um, I, for, uh, I forget the first name. Um, and uh, Sachin can help us. Um, the he, this is the most important piece. He had military classification classified documents. He had some of the important defense positions. He also had documents pertaining to Afghan, you know, the Afghan withdrawal. Why was he having these documents and why does the special counsel and some of the people in department think that it is a old man's memory and he retained it? This is when he was vice president during the vice presidency and subsequent. It was found in White House and in his home in Delaware. This is the reason why you go back to that period, there was a lot of data that points to the abrupt withdrawal, Bagram Air Base withdrawal, a lot of military equipment being left behind. What is the set of documents that he had? What are the things that pertains to the military positions of US that he had and with um, Robert Herb? Uh, so that he had uh, that relates to, uh, you know, sensitive discussions between United States and China. So this is the reason why people, I mean, the leaders from countries like India say, we like to work with the U.S., but we don't trust. Sriji, so they've dismissed this. 
as a memory loss and dismissed it as basically saying not enforceable in court, so it's okay. Whereas in the case of President, former President Trump, you know what happened in Florida and what dramas were created by the FBI and Department of Justice. So this is a major revelation, but guarantee you the mainstream media will dismiss it. And uh, yes, indeed, sir. And uh, Hunter Biden and his, uh, Joe Biden's brother, they're all involved in taking money from CFEC. They, the amounts are all described in great detail in a book called Red Handed. I've talked about this. I've done episodes on this. And this is now slowly coming out. Uh, they have unearthed $4.8 million. There's a check of $1 million. There's a story in Washington Post that gives you even the check details. So this is now coming out in the why, uh, uh, right? Uh, coming out in the open. See that this is all Hunter Biden. No, Hunter Biden, uh, Biden's brother, yep. and some other relatives. The number is goes to almost thirty-four million dollars, according to the press reports. Okay, the four point eight, three point four. These numbers, maybe the the checks, wire transfers, etc. But they allege that numbers are very big. The guy, the House Committee and the Feds who interviewed uh, Melvin uh, Yan or Melvin In, uh, he has, uh, the person has given, um, it was a consultant uh, from New York, so-called energy consultant, is given money knowing that these people have no expertise on energy. So you can begin to see, based on the first thing that we mentioned, based on this particular point, how deep the Chinese influence. Remember, one of the Chinese representatives even had an office proximus to Joe Biden when he was the vice president to Obama, facilitated by Hunter Biden. That is the level of infiltration that happened, but it's all will be smudged under the wood carpet. Sir, interestingly, Mitch McConnell's wife is also of Chinese origin. And she has this amazing knack of being in the administration, regardless of whether there is a Democratic vice pre uh, president or a Republican president. Just telling. And it, 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 this this, this uh, racket runs deep. Um, Fed discovered Chinese hackers embedded in American infrastructure for at least five years. Read my book, guys. <laughs> there is, we know we have documented evidence where they, they hacked in. Sridharji. They were in defense, they were in communications, they were in space, they are in water treatment and sewerage. Why would you be in water treatment and sewerage? Very interesting. So most critical infrastructure areas of United States, they had embedded themselves. For the past five years, they were dormant, but they were there. This is a collaborative cybersecurity effort. So remember, the United States had a very modest to almost no cybersecurity. And now, you know, the, the cyber investigations are revealing themselves the actual outcomes of uh, the investigations. So they were Australia, New Zealand, United States, all collaborated in their efforts in this investigation. We don't know what the, what the level of uh, intrusion into the other countries but certainly they were very embedded into the U.S. infrastructure uh, for this specific report. So if you look at this particular section of our kind of reporting or communication, now you can go back to Nikki Haley's uh, statement, and then you can look at all the stuff that has happened in the last three years or three years plus. Then you can draw your own conclusions why certain decisions that have happened during this particular period appear quite strange and inconsistent and contrary to the policies. Yes, indeed. And there is a hotline between China and White House. That's all I can tell. <laughs> um, U.S. major stories under siege. Retailers flee cities as unarmed security. Public authorities fail to curb this. I released a video, Sridharji, at 3 p.m. today where a bicycle, motorcycle rider yeah. is thrown out of his bike. They steal the bike. And you can see the guy's momentum going. He's hitting a, a pole, that meter, what uh, you know, parking meter pole, with the uh, helmet. And then they not only stop there; they have also stolen his phone. They go and drain the entire finances from you know Zelle and other places. 
Yeah, the younger generation keeps everything in their home. So you are you are completely lost, zero. It is horrible the way these these are being done, sir. Sir, please, what is what is now? Gavin Newsom goes to a store in San Francisco. He's an eyewitness to a three hundred dollar robbery, and he freaks out. Does he not know that in his own city of San Francisco, nine hundred dollars, and unless he's being not looked at, even Los Angeles, the same story. They're turning a blind eye, G. the Democratic governors are turning a blind eye. That is why there is no, these uh, security officials are unarmed. Safety, public safety and security officials are unarmed at most of these stores. So they are under attack. And the stores are saying that enough is enough. Now, the latest is Nordstrom. I think Nordstrom and Bloomingdale's. They are trying to exit some of all these kind of important venues uh, for the fear that there's no law and there's no protection and there's no enforcement. By the way, I don't know whether we covered this. This is the this is the norm. They steal from the cities which allow them to steal, such as New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and so on. Then they take all their you know, goodies and go and spend it in Florida because if they try to steal in Florida, uh, you know, they're going to be punished or in Texas. So this is the new game that is going on. And uh, as Sriji pointed out, you know, uh, four in NYPD officers in New York were uh, assaulted and uh, they caught the thieves either in somewhere in Arizona or Las Vegas. So you can see these guys are very mobile. It has become an orchestrated campaign. Where has this come from? Illegals who have come into the country. The campaigns are being launched by the illegals in an orchestrated manner. Okay, Biden administration will not talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. But these illegals who have occupied themselves in democratic mayor cities because they are very sympathetic to the cause of these people. Has the United States lost its foreign policy plot against North Korea? That is not rouge, that is rogue. Sorry about that, sir. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, there's a wide discussion going on. The latest salvo fired by the North Korean leader is, I have nothing to discuss with you. Okay, if you do anything to me, I will obliterate not only Korea, but I will obliterate even cities in United States. So they have now been conducting hypersonic missiles. Um, submarine launched missiles, ballistic missiles, ground based ballistic missiles. Many of them are capable of being armed with, uh, capable of being armed with nuclear warheads. So, effectively, United States, which once upon a time had a negotiating power, has no capacity to work. The North Korean leader has said, to hell with you. And Supreme Court appears to back former President Trump in the ballot challenge. Uh, I'm glad this for us. I, I was not following this news. What is the uh, what is happening, sir? It is the Supreme Court. Uh, the two. I mean, you know, you have the liberal justices and you have the, uh, the conservative yeah. justices. So the conservative justices are saying, um, you know, it is uh, it looks rather funny for you guys and taking the law into your own hands and. Uh, you got to put the guy back uh, in in the ballot and redo the redo the election. You can't take him out of the ballot. Now they have not pronounced a verdict, but they are expressing concern as both sides make their case. Remember, February seventh is when the, uh, the this case was taken up by the Supreme Court, as was indicated. So the, those hearings are going on. It is believed that the Supreme Court will overturn and ask. Um, uh, uh, pres former, pres former President Trump to be on the ballot, but that will be again challenged. So we don't know how this 2024 election is going to work out, Sriji. When and how this election, because there are so many cases and whether there will be even proper conduct of elections uh, remains a question mark. They said the same thing of 2020 elections, sir. The Democrats okay. said that that time. Exactly. That's because President, uh, for, at that point of time, the President Trump was in power. Uh, that was also in the middle of the COVID, if you recall. And they were asking for certain things that President Trump, from at that point of time, the President Trump was refusing. So they felt, uh, you know, uh, uh, they challenged the validity of the elections. Then the elections was conducted. They won President Trump. 
challenged the, uh, the president, former President Trump challenged the elections. Now we call that as the insurrection as to what happened on January 6th. So therefore, this anyway, this thing is likely to play out big in 2024, even bigger than 2020, Shiji. Uh, thank you, sir. Next one, please. Israel at war. The UN chief vows action against Hamas for infiltrating world body. Israeli forces intensify strikes on the border city of Rafah as Netanyahu rules out a ceasefire. Israeli drones target vehicles in southern Lebanon. Several killed as such for Hamas's Yahya Sinwar continues. He's believed to be in Rafah, isn't he? He's believed to be in Rafah. Um, by the way, we are, there's a breaking news is that Antony Blinken has left Middle East having failed to secure a peace or a ceasefire. This is a very big blow to the United States in terms of its diplomacy. The diplomacy has failed. Effectively, Mr. Netanyahu has said there's no ceasefire on Hamas terms. Ceasefire has to be on Israel's terms because Israel was attacked. So Mr. Blinken has flown. Now, coming to um, yeah, Mr. Yahya Sinwar, is uh, Israel had offered a package very similar to uh, Yasser Arafat to leave the Palestinian territory or in this case Gaza um, but he's not traceable or he's not accessible but he's supposed to be holed up uh, in Rafa. Why uh, Israel is concerned about they believe that he will run um, Hamas or manage Gaza very similar to the way Mr. Arafat tried to manage it uh, from exile. So this war can continue for days and months and and uh, the whole objective of this um, this war in Gaza is about complete elimination or defeat of Hamas Shriji. And we'll we'll will and, and this battle of Rafa we'll explain why battle of Rafa is being both opposed by United Nations as well as United States and world. And we believe that that is that is the final part of this particular story. Now let's take a look at this map where Rafa is. We'll show you eventually. We started from east. We have moved all the way to the west. This is the only gateway. Rafa is the place where most of the Palestinians uh, from north of Gaza have moved in and settled in Rafa. There's believed to be close to one million, more than one million uh, Palestinian refugees in this point. The border point, which goes from Rafa into Israel, sorry, into Sinai Desert, into Egypt. Is actually controlled on from air and sea. You can see the um, the, the the Mediterranean in the adjacent side is controlled by Israel, but the land entry point is controlled by Egypt. So the fear is that either to block or either to um, uh, enforce and flush out the terrorists. A land attack has to happen by the Israelis, which means they're going to wade through this million refugees who have settled in Rafa. Okay, and that's first point. The second point is that there will be the civilian damages would be catastrophic because of the density. We'll show in one of the maps how dense this area is. That's number two. Number three, attacks launched from here by the remnant Hamas people also causes a potential problem. So that's number three. Number four, from a strategic point of view, you know, we had the Red Sea, we had the um, uh, the Persian Gulf, and then we had the Indian Ocean from Yemen. Now, this could fill in, slip, split, this could spill over into the Mediterranean. It could also spill over into Egypt being brought into the war as the Israelis try to chase these people crossing the border into the Sinai Desert. So this is the significance of, we'll show in the next map, this is the significance of this battle of Rafa, which is being opposed. So you can see now um, where Rafa is and where, you know, the central uh, rivers or the central blue lines that you see is uh, is the, um, uh, the Suez Canal. And, you know, Suez Canal is an important kind of navigation gateway between the Mediterranean Sea into... Um, the into the Red Sea. So that could also be choked, creating problems from a supply lines point of view. So now when you take a look at the overarching map, we have problems in Arabian Ocean. We have problems in Arabian Sea. We have problems in uh, Gulf of Aden. We have problems in Red Sea. 
we have problems in uh, Persian, Persian Gulf, and now we are going to have problems in the Suez that could spill over into Mediterranean Sea when you look at the map in a holistic. So you can see how well this is orchestrated from east to west and sandwiched between Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Jordan with Israel right in between. But they are the, these are the supply choke points for the world in terms of affecting the economies, Sriji. That's why this Rafa, which is the final piece of the battle, because otherwise they can continue to frustrate. They can tackle Hezbollah. They can tackle uh, the Houthis. But to tackle the residual Hamas, they have to come to Rafa. This is the picture of Rafa in terms of the density of all these temporary and permanent dwellings that have developed as from October 7th as this war played out, Sriji. Thank you, sir. And uh, Israel um, is uh, striking across all fronts. And they are saying that Iraqi sovereignty is respected, the US is, while holding Iranian surrogates accountable. How do you sift the two, sir? How do you know that this is an Iranian source and not an Iraqi source? Oh, well, you know, this is the Biden's contradiction, which is effectively to say, you know, we'll strike, but we will not strike. We don't want to, we want to strike, but we don't want a war with Iran. We want to strike, but we don't want to have a war with Hamas. Why? Because election year, consequences, or incongruent policies within the Biden administration, which is why we are in this specific mess that we are in. I mean, to make these kinds of statements, this is a Biden statement, which is to say, U.S. says it respects Iraqi sovereignty, but holding Iranian surrogates respect. This is the, what you call retaliatory attacks that the United States has launched. As far as Israel is concerned, it says we will go and strike the Lotus, uh, latest drone attack, took out um, um, uh, a big vehicle with a number of casualties in, uh, in Lebanon. There was no confirmation whether Yahya Sinwar was one of them, but they were looking for, and but it has had uh, significant casualties uh, by virtue of this drone attack, a very targeted drone attack by the, the Israeli Shriji. And, uh, and they made a statement, Blinken, Mr. Blinken should know from PA that Hamas is not to be trusted and it is not an organization that can administer Effectively, Israel saying Gaza will be under its administration. Sir, PA is Palestinian Authority? Correct. Next one, please. Other world headlines. Is China seeking a submarine presence in the Sea of Japan? Could offer a base to launch ballistic missiles against the US? Two Chinese H-6 bombers and a pair of Russian Tu-95 bombers were cited more recently as most recently as they flew over Sea of Japan to the East China Sea. The North Korea with uh, the hypersonic missiles, land and submarine ballistic missiles, nuclear armed missiles with ability to strike targets in Japan and the US is in no mood to discuss peace. Sir, there are a lot of maps. Please talk to it, sir. Go ahead. Yes. So we'll go to the first map. Okay, now next one. So this is, we have used this map before. So you can see the Sea of Japan. You have red lines is the, um, um, you know, the border as contested by China, the blue line by Japan, and the, uh, the white dotted line is the Korean. Okay. The exclusive, exclusive zones are those which uh, China and Japan have demarcated. Now, what we're talking about here is the planes that are the Russians and the Chinese planes coming through Sea of Japan, okay, and passing through East China Sea, which means this particular area that you can you can uh, very vividly see in the map, okay, they pass through that and then made their way out into South China Sea, okay. We will we will show you why this navigation is very key. Now, when you take a look at the East China, East China is very critical. That's where China wants to have a potential submarine base because it covers, it keeps an eye on the Korean Peninsula. It keeps an eye on Taiwan. It also keeps an eye on Japan. And there are two contested areas which they're trying to usurp in, in concert with Taiwan. 
So we'll go to the next map. Uh, the next one. We'll come back to this. Okay. This is the this is the area where Russia and China are contesting this specific. Russia and Japan are contesting. They call Kuril Islands, which is the north of Japan. Okay. This Kuril Islands, the first one you see, is where the Ch Russians are supposed to end their territory. Now this is all um, uh, north of. Uh, uh, the, the the north part of the sea is all uh, owned by uh, the Japanese. But the Russians have now infiltrated and they have stretched the map right up to the Kuril Islands, as they say, which you see in the bottom point. So they have stretched. It's only a matter of time. Only a small piece of area separates the Russians from getting into, getting into Japan. So... The, this Sea of Japan access, which was done by the Russians and the Chinese, is a coordinated effort to chop the northern part taken by the, the, the Russians. Then we'll come to the southern part in a minute. Next map. Okay. Now, this is the southern side. This is south of Okinawa. And we had always stated Senkaku would be the first one that the Chinese will take out because that gives them a choking point to from the north from the northern side or from the sea of japan um any any attack that they launch the sea of japan submarine in case united states we'll show in one more map in case united states tries to do a deterrence they have a footprint to actually launch missiles into united states from that specific location let alone south china sea where is senkaku oh one more sorry the Senkaku is, um, you know, I don't have a mechanism to point out, but there is a little amoeba-like structure north of Taipei. That's where Senkaku is. So north, south, and now for the first time, both the Russians and the Chinese send their reconnaissance planes through the Sea of Japan into East China and into South China Sea. And South China Sea is where we'll discuss in, in a moment. But this also tells you that there is a very concerted effort. Now, where does North Korea get, come into uh, this picture? We have another map. Okay. Um, no, that is the, uh, that the one that uh, is being, that is Senkaku. That is okay? Senkaku. Senkaku. Right. That is Senkaku, which is north of Taipei. Thank you. Thank you. So now uh, we go to the next map. We go to the next. I need one more map. I need one more map. No, one more. One more. Ah, uh, no. Yes. Now we bring the South Korea, North Koreans into this picture. Okay, where is Sea of Japan? Can you see Sea of Japan in the map? Yeah, you see the Sea of Japan. Okay, it's north of South Korea. Where is it? It is east of, east of uh, sorry, uh, it is north of South Korea, east of North Korea. Where is North Korean's military installations? We have marked it in red. And this is the place from where they are launching various types of missiles. Now, where is the Sea of Japan? You can see the Sea of Japan. Where is Japan? Japan is right there. And then right, bit, right below is the, the Taiwanese peninsula. So you have North Korea, you have uh, Russia, and you have China. Now it all seems to be a coordinated song to control Sea of Japan, East China Sea, stretching their way into South China Sea. Prior, China was attacking only Senkaku and Taiwan. Russia was only focused and attacking the Kuril Islands. The North Koreans were doing their own work in the North Korean side. Now they all are coming, you know, in an integrated manner. And, and China wants to have a submarine base right in the Sea of Japan. And remember that without the U.S. and the Western alliance being in place, many of these nations are in, especially the Japan and the South Korean peninsula, is in a lot of deep troubled waters 
if all these guys come together and perpetuate action. So this is the integrated story that is coming out in the this all these things began to happen from December. Most news is kind of filtering out. Um, and the the Sea of Japan two planes is just less than a week old. And as we speak, they're supposed to be, supposed to be uh, exercises being conducted by Japan, Australia, and US. We'll come to that in a minute, and then we'll do one more map, and then we we, we, we go to the next segment of the report. One more map. Ne the previous? The previous? No, 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 no. Previous. 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 Okay, now you get the picture. Okay, where is United States? United States, if you can expand, if you can blow this map a little bit. I don't know whether it's possible. Uh, it's the map. The west of, yeah, it's to the west, and it's a long way to go from there. I think. Uh, so you can the basically what it is is, if you take a look at the eastern side of the world, especially from Sea of Japan into Korean Peninsula and into South China Sea. You can see strategic anchor. If you get past Japan, Japan is the small kind of map protruding out. Then you have Japan has always been. There are strategic shields that are in place to deter any action going into Pacific and into United States from renegade nations such as North Korea. Okay, Japan is taken. They have unbrizzled access from the western side all the way going back to east. This is the significance of this map. Then if you go to the map on the western side, you will find that you have the war that is going on between Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, and um, the Houthis, and the Israel. So all are choke points, close to 66 to 75% of the trade happens between these these two routes between those two routes. It's, a, it's a beautiful map that uh, um, um, Sachin has presented. So you have South Korea, you have Japan. If you take Japan out, then you can see you are coming into the United States across the North Pacific Ocean. So this is the unfortunate situation the world is in because the world has no leadership. There's, there's no leadership. There's a complete leadership vacuum. Now, Antony Blinken has no peace formula for Middle East, has no peace formula for North Korea because he can't even negotiate, has no peace formula for Russia-Ukraine war. In the meanwhile, many of the trade routes are getting jammed and there is a German frigate making its way into Red Sea at the request of the trading bodies because to help mitigate the Houthi attacks because US, UK, Japan, uh, Australia, not enough. I think India is also helping. So the German frigates as well are joining. So we are moving towards, you know, some form of a major, major event, basically under the pretext of making sure that the shipping lanes are not choked. Next, please. Let's go back to, yeah. Um... Is Quad minus India back with the US, Japan, and Australia conducting military drills in the South China Sea? Sir, um, did India opt out of this or did the Quad say we don't need you? What's the deal there? I think we said, we, we, when, if you recall, when Biden administration took over, the question was asked, is Quad going? No, I said, we, we said that there's no Quad. The Quad will be because it's President Trump's, uh, former President Trump's uh, kind of pet baby or. Uh, uh, you know, Abe. Um, yeah. which one, Mr. Shinzo Abe? Shinzo yeah. Abe's, uh, uh, you know, lead effort. No, I, I, I don't know whether India was invited for these exercises. How these exercises were conducted is not known, but these exercises have happened. What's the quality of this exercise? And what, what kind of uh, fleet participated? We'll get to know uh, very soon. That's why I use the word. Is Quad minus India back with US, Japan, and Australia conducting military drills in South China Sea? Why in, did India abstain? I doubt whether India would have abstained, but these things would have happened 
as a natural consequence or a natural sequence of events evolving from some of the things that are happening in the Middle East region. But whatever it is, way is squad when South China Sea under threat, when there is joint exercises by Russia and China, and when you have renegade North Korea firing missiles. Where is squad? Quad is supposed to, you know, maintain seamless and peaceful navigation of trade and 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 frigates through the South China Sea and the Korean Peninsula. Where, where is quad? There's no quad. And Poland criticizes uh, the Republican Party for blocking aid to Ukraine, citing Reagan. What is this new fracas, sir? The the news is Poland is saying, uh, you know. Um, uh, because the aid has not been released as yet, Shri you know, it is stuck with the border deal. The, the Ukraine-Israel uh, aid is stuck uh, as a result of, I think, close to $70 billion is stuck. Um, you only gave $55 billion collecting uh, money from the various EU nations. The United States is a big donor. So Poland is saying, you know, Zelensky needs to fight. You know, you Republicans don't hold back because... Republicans have stated, before you give money to Ukraine, we have to protect our country. You know, are you going, what are you going to do with border? We got, you know, we got a leaking border. So this is why he has cited Reagan, the biggest threat to the world is communism, which is Russia. At that point of time, he didn't anticipate China to come. He expected Russia to be, a, that's how the Cold War started. Uh, and here we are, Shiji. Um, illegal migration continues to be a problem. We just segued into this. Uh, sir, touch upon it about what Finland wants to do. Uh, is this mostly because the Russian youth don't want to fight and they are trying to flee the country? No, I think what is going on, Sriji, is if you remember that Finland and Sweden and Norway, uh, these three nations are going to become part of NATO. Sweden would be the last one. Um, if you ever been to Helsinki, you know, it's a lot of Russians in Helsinki because it's only a stone's throw from St. Petersburg. So you have a lot of Russians coming in, whether they're spies, whether they are, uh, you know, what they are, we don't know. They're very similar to the porous borders that we have in United States, very similar to the por porous borders that has developed in Europe. So the question that is being raised is the Finland is saying, I'm going to shut the borders until such time. There's a fear. What will be the Russian elections? Are people fearing the elections? What happens post-elections, etc. cetera, Shri Ji. So that's Sir, the reason. I think that's all we have for today. And uh, we've already covered the last one called Frigate, German Frigate. Uh, viewers, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notification. Sridhar Ji, thank you so much, sir. We'll be again coming back in a few days. And we'll keep you posted on all the developments around the world. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day or wonderful evening.